Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Sadaqallahu al-Aliyyul Azim. Illuminate your hearts and minds with a very loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. The holiest month out of the year is the month of Ramadan. And the holiest night in this holy month is Laylatul Qadr, the night of power or the night of destiny. Why is this night the holiest night out of the year? Such that it is equivalent to 1,000 months or 82 years or so. For two primary reasons. Number one, because of its association with the Holy Quran. On such a night, the Holy Quran was revealed. This night is honored by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, because the Holy Quran was revealed to whom? To the representatives of God, to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. بِعَالِ مُحَمَّدٍ عُرِفَ الصَّوَابُ وَفِي أَبْيَاتِهِمْ نَزَلَ الْكِتَابُ The Holy Quran was revealed in the homes of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. This is what makes this night so special and so holy. Because of its link and connection to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one. And number two, because of its link to the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. The Imams of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Because on such a night, the angels continue to descend every year on such a night. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, was alive, they used to descend upon him. The angels descend on such a night. In our time, they descend on the representative of God, Al Imam Al Mahdi, Ajjalallahu Ta'ala Faraja. They descend upon the representative of God on this earth. Hence we see that the Prophet, peace be upon him, what did he say? When he left humanity, what did he leave behind him? That would safeguard us, that would protect us and take us to the path of guidance. Inni tarikun fikum thaqlain. Kitab Allah wa itrati. The book of Allah I'm leaving behind and my progeny, the Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them. Therefore, it is very important for us to come to know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on such a night. I know that many of you are eager to begin the a'mal and the wonderful actions of this night. But allow me to tell you that as Al-Imam al-Sadiq explains, the best action on Laylatul Qadr is what? No, it's not Dua Joshan al-Kabir, even though it's a great Dua. It's not Dua Abu Hamza al-Thimali. It's not any of the prayers. It's what? It's seeking knowledge. If on such a night you seek knowledge, you find yourself closer to God and the Holy Quran, then yes, you have done the best A'mal. Therefore, we would like to take some time tonight to see closeness to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this holy Qur'an, because it is this book of God which makes this night such a special night. The holy Qur'an is the everlasting miracle of the holy prophet, peace be upon him. Every prophet of God was equipped with miracles, but those miracles ended with those prophets. Did any one of, any one of us see the stick of Prophet Musa alayhi salam? We did not. Did we see the miracles of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, in reviving the dead and curing the leper? No, we did not. But there is one miracle that continues to exist in our daily lives. And we have the opportunity to witness it daily. And that is the miracle of the seal of all prophets, the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Now many people wonder, especially those who are not experts in the Arabic language. 
Sometimes they come to us and they say, Sayyid, how do I know for sure that the Quran is the book of God and it's a miracle? I'm not an expert for me to examine the Holy Quran. So how do I really know that this book is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I either don't speak the Arabic language or even if I do, I only know the basics of Arabic. I'm not an expert in the Arabic language. And some even come and object, like once I was in New York and this physician objected to me. He was not Arab. He says, you know, isn't this discrimination? Allah is favoring the Arabs over others by revealing the Quran in the Arabic language. Isn't this a type of discrimination? A type of favoritism for the Arabs or no? Some people ask, why is it that the Holy Quran was revealed in the Arabic language? First of all, the Prophet's tongue was Arabic because he was living in an Arabic society. The Prophet was in the Arabian Peninsula. Now if you're in an environment which speaks Arabic and you receive a book of guidance from God, what do you expect? For God to reveal the Quran in a different language? Imagine the Quran was revealed in French, in Arabia. Would anyone be guided? Would anyone benefit from the Quran? Could anyone carry the Quran to pass it down to us? No. Allah, one of the reasons why he chose the Arabic language because the Prophet, peace be upon him, happened to be in an Arabic society. And as the Quran tells us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed every Prophet to speak the language of his community, of the society in which he lives in. So this is one reason and it's very obvious. The second reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this final miracle which would continue to the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted this miracle to be carried through a suitable language. And the language of Arabic is the most suitable language for the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because it could be argued that it is the most precise and concise and powerful language that we have. When it comes to its descriptive nature, when it comes to the power that we see in it. You know, that doctor in New York, he objected to me when I said that to him. He says, you know, how can you prove that? Who says Arabic is more precise and concise than any other language? I told him, okay. Let's take the first ayah of the Qur'an. What's the first ayah of the Qur'an? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. How many words is that? Four words. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Translate that into English. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. You have nine words. Which one's more precise? Which one's more concise? You have a word in the Holy Qur'an, which is the longest word, or the second longest word, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah. Two words. فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمْ Allah. Translate that into English. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will suffice you to protect you from their danger. Two words versus seven or eight words. Which one's more precise? Which one's more concise? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the vessel and the means to carry this final mu'jizah, this final message, this final miracle, to be the most accurate language, the most precise and concise language, which is the Arabic language. This could be argued as one of the other reasons why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this language. It's not because He's favoring a group. And what demonstrates to you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not favoring a group. Look at Muslims today. You know, Westerners, Americans, Canadians, Westerners, they think most Muslims are what? Are Arab, but that's not the case. Only 15 to 20 percent of all Muslims around the world are Arab. You see, Islam attracted more non-Arabs than Arabs. Because the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not favor a single group or a community. It's universal. It's for all. Now, how do I know? Someone who does not speak Arabic or I'm not fluent in Arabic. How do I know that the Holy Quran is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? 
It's that miraculous message of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Well, let me ask you this question. How do you know that the black hole exists? You know the black holes in the galaxies? Those areas in which gravity is so strong and concentrated? They're called the black hole. They're black because it traps light. Light cannot even pass through a black hole. It gets trapped in it because of its gravity. Or we see that we are told that light travels at a speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. How do we know that? Have you ever tested that? The average person does not have the device and the vacuum to test the speed of light. You trust the experts. When you see the scientific community, when you see the experts saying that certain realities exist in our lives, then you accept them. You accept the words, you trust the experts. For example, during the time of Prophet Musa when he performed that miracle, which was the stick, how did the people know this was a miracle? It could have been magic. He could have been a very knowledgeable magician. How did they know this was a miracle? When they saw the magicians, the sorcerers prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they saw the miracle of Prophet Musa. So the people, they were impacted by the experts who were the magicians. During the time of Prophet Isa السلام, how did the people know that when Prophet Isa is reviving the dead and curing the leper, he's performing a miracle? Maybe that's a type of magic. How do we know? Because they saw the doctors of his time, they were baffled and they considered it to be a miracle, so they accepted. When you go to the community of experts and they bear witness that this is a miracle, this is one excellent way in which you can be sure that the Qur'an is that final miracle. Now look at experts throughout history. Since the past 14 centuries, go to the experts of the Arabic language. You see the majority of experts in the Arabic language, they tell you that the Holy Qur'an is a special book. It's not the work of a human being. It's a special book. It's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because nothing in history comes close to it. In its power, in its delivery. In the literary gems that you find in the Holy Quran. And that's why, by the way, many of the experts on the Quran, and this is a lesson for us because you could argue, I'm not an Arab person, how do I know? Well, you know, a lot of the experts in the Quran, they were not Arabs. But they studied the Holy Quran, and then they testified to it being a miracle. For example, Al-Raghib Al-Isfahani. Al-Raghib Al-Isfahani, he was a linguist and an exegete of the Quran, a mufassir. But he was not an Arab. He came from Isfahan. For example, you have Sibawai. Sibawai, the very famous grammarian. He was not Arab. Al-Fakhr Al-Razi, the most famous Sunni exegete of the Quran. He's from Tabaristan. He was not an Arab. But we see all these non-Arabs who became experts testifying to the greatness of the Qur'an and witnessing that is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In fact, you even have non-Muslims who have testified to the greatness of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have this professor at the University of Naples. She passed away maybe some 20 years ago. She was an expert in the Arabic language. This is the university in Italy. She was Italian. Laura Valieri. You know what she says about the Holy Quran? I want to read her her specific quote. She says, The heavenly book of Islam is miraculous and inimitable. You can't copy it. You cannot produce something like it or imitate it. Its style is totally unprecedented in Arabic literature. And its peculiar impact on the spirit of the human being derives from its special and superior characteristics. Then she says, how is it possible that such a book should be the work of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? An Arab who had never studied, we find in this book a treasury of knowledge beyond the capacity of the greatest philosophers. 
and statesmen. And for this reason, it is also impossible to regard the Qur'an as the work of an educated person. No. It's not the work of a man. It's the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have all these experts who are testifying that the Qur'an is a miracle. And we trust their expertise. You have thousands of experts throughout history who are testifying. And this is truly amazing. This is one way in which we come to know that the Holy Qur'an is truly a miracle and the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way in which we come to know the greatness of the Holy Qur'an, the Holy Qur'an makes a challenge. If you have any doubts about this book, bring something like it. 14 centuries have passed. I ask you, has anyone, any organization, any university, any literary figure been able to produce something like the Holy Qur'an? Show it to us. Where is it? This is a challenge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made 14 centuries ago. No one has been able to meet this challenge. This is another way in which we know that the Holy Qur'an is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A third way in which we know that this work, the Holy Qur'an is the work of Allah, is that you'll find no discrepancies in it. The Holy Qur'an was revealed in a period of 23 years. And it covers so many topics, social topics, scientific subjects, about politics, about the economy, about religious laws, about historical facts. Yet you will not find a single contradiction or discrepancy in the Holy Qur'an. You will not find a single historical inaccuracy in the Holy Qur'an. If there is, show it to us. Let's see. What is this historical inaccuracy? Or if there are facts which are wrong in the Holy Qur'an. All this serves to, serves to prove that the Holy Qur'an is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another way in which we find out that the Holy Qur'an is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the predictions of the Holy Qur'an. The Qur'an predicted a number of events. How could anyone know that other than God? The one who can foresee the future. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, made the treaty of Hudaybiyah in the sixth year of Hijrah, Muslims thought that's it. It's going to be a very long time before they can enter Mecca. Because the mushrikeen, the pagans, blocked them from going to Mecca. The Prophet had a dream in which he saw himself and the Muslims going into Masjid al-Haram and doing the Umrah, doing the pilgrimage to, the, to Mecca. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals a verse in Surah Al-Fatih. لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ The dream that the Prophet saw will become a reality. لَتَدْخُلُنَّ الْمَسْجِدَ الْحَرَامِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ آمِنِينَ All Muslims, you shall enter Masjid al-Haram. You know, some, some companions, by the way, we're not talking about you know, non-Muslims at the time. Some companions made fun. They said, this Muhammad, he thinks we're going into Masjid al-Haram and when the mushrikeen have all that power and they've blocked us. How can we go to Masjid al-Haram? Next year, the Muslims were in Masjid al-Haram. Two years later, you had Fatah Mecca, the conquest of Mecca. How could anyone predict that? Before going to Masjid al-Haram and achieving victory over the pagans, who other than God knew that? This is an indication that the Holy Quran is the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go to another verse, Surah Al-Rum, which we shall recite tonight, the chapter of the Romans. Ghulibat Al-Rum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the Eastern Romans, they have lost to the Persians at a battle. Now when the Persians who were pagans, mushrikeen, they achieved victory over the Eastern Romans, the mushrikeen in Mecca were happy. They had a party. They said, yes, this is great. See, just like the Persian mushrikeen achieved victory over the Eastern Romans who were Christians, we shall also achieve victory over the Muslims, over these monotheistic religions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no. Yes, now the Romans have been defeated. But within nine years, fi bid'i sinin, they shall be the ones who are the winners. And subhanallah. The Quran says, bid'i sinin means less than nine years. In seven years, they achieved victory. Who other than God could predict that? And document it in the Holy Quran for everyone to see. Seven years before the victory, the Holy Quran predicted their victory. 
Isn't this the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Another way in which we can come to realize that the Holy Quran is the miracle of the Creator, simply look at the scientific miracles in the Holy Quran. Allahu Akbar. You see, for example, in one verse of the Holy Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, I'm going through this very briefly because our youngsters, many of our youth, even some elders, they struggle with this, brothers and sisters. On such a night, I want you to trust the Holy Quran. Realize this is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With confidence and faith, read it and reflect upon it. You will benefit more from it. Not because your parents told you this is the Quran, you accept it. No. Because you yourself know that no one other than God could produce such a Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ If Allah wants to guide someone, Allah will open his chest to Islam. وَمَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُضِلَّهُ يَجْعَلْ صَدْرَهُ ضَيِّقًا حَرَجًا كَأَنَّمَا يَصَّعَدُ فِي السَّمَاءِ But if Allah wants to misguide someone, He will constrict his chest. It's as if he's going up towards the sky. Subhanallah. This verse is one of the miracles of the Holy Quran. 14 centuries ago, who in the Arabian Peninsula knew that if you go higher with altitude, there is less oxygen, therefore it's as if you want to suffocate. You can't breathe well, so your chest is constricted. Who knew that 14 centuries ago? Now we know it because we have devices, because we go on an airplane and sometimes the oxygen level drops, we know that. And no, back then no one had climbed, climbed Mount Everest for him to know this fact. Mount Everest was climbed 90 years ago. In the 1920s was the first time when they reached the peak of Mount Everest. Who knew that 14 centuries ago? Isn't this the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You see another verse in the Holy Quran tells us that Allah has created every living thing from water. Who knew that in the Arabian Peninsula 14 centuries ago? Today science confirms it, but back then people did not know this. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Holy Quran. We have another verse in the Holy Quran. Allah says, We have created the universe and we're constantly expanding it. I ask you, who in the world knew this 14 centuries ago? Which science knew this, that the universe was expanding? How could you tell? Yes, now with advanced technology, we can detect that the universe is expanding at a speed faster than the speed of light. But back then, who knew that? Subhanallah, this is the miracle of the Holy Quran. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have so many other verses in the Quran that testify to the greatness of Allah. Another first verse in the Holy Quran states, وَلَقَدْ we have made the sky a protective ceiling. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful phrase. Yes, you see the sky. You don't detect anything with your eye when you see. It's just thin air that you see. But this thin air is actually a protective ceiling for the earth. Doesn't the ozone protect you from UV radiation? The magnetic field of the earth, doesn't it not protect you? Could there have been... Could there be life on earth without this? The gases that surround the earth, don't they protect us from meteors? From intruders coming to earth? Allah says, I've created a protective ceiling. Who knew that back then? 14 centuries ago, you'd look at the sky and you just see thin air. How did you know that this is a protective ceiling? But this is the word of God. The everlasting miracle of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. Now tonight, as we come to our final series in examining Nahj al-Balagha, I want to share with you a few descriptions that Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam uses in Nahj al-Balagha to refer to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The amazing words of the Imam. How did Ali ibn Abi Talib describe the Holy Quran? This book which was revealed on such a night, which we want to get closer to on such a night. Listen to the beautiful descriptions of Amir al-Mu'mini. 
In one hadith in Nahj al balagha the Imam says, Zahiruhu aniq. The outer appearance of the Quran is fascinating. It's nice and tidy. Wabatinuhu amiq. But it's very deep from the inside. From the inside, you see the depths of the Holy Quran. La tafna ajaibu. The wonders of the Qur'an never finish. And every single day we discover new wonders in the Holy Qur'an. Truly the wonders of this book never cease to recur in our lives and throughout history. Now the Imam salam in bringing this Holy Qur'an closer to us, he describes the Holy Qur'an as a book which allows you to see God. You know, as you all know, one way in which you can come to know an author is through his or her book. When you see a book, that book is a window into the author. You become closer to the author. You begin to see how the author thinks. What kind of a personality the author has. The Imam alayhi salam in Nahj al-Balagha teaches us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He uncovers His glory in the Qur'an. فَتَجَلَّى لَهُمْ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ يَكُونُوا رَأَوْ Without seeing God with your naked eyes, with these physical eyes, the Holy Qur'an gives you an opportunity to see Allah through your heart. Look at the Qur'an and you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَرَاهُمْ حِلْمَهُ كَيْفَ حَلِمْ وَأَرَاهُمْ عَفْوَهُ كَيْفَ عَفَى وَأَرَاهُمْ قُدْرَتَهُ كَيْفَ قَدْر You want to see the attributes of God? You want to see the patience of God? See the Holy Qur'an. You want to see the forgiveness of God? See the Holy Qur'an. You want to see the power of God? See the Holy Qur'an. The Holy Qur'an gives you a beautiful window into seeing your Creator, into seeing the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unfortunately, many of us do not know God. Why? Because we do not know the Holy Qur'an. Come to know the Holy Qur'an, embrace the Holy Qur'an, and you'll come to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Imam alayhi salam, in a beautiful description, he teaches us, listen to this very powerful statement. The Imam alayhi salam says, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ هُوَ النَّاسُحُ الَّذِي لَا يَغُشْ وَالْحَادِ الَّذِي لَا يُضِلْ وَالْمُحَدِّثُ الَّذِي لَا يَكْذِبْ Oh people know that this Qur'an is the sincere book, the honest book which will never deceive you. With any other book you could be deceived except the Holy Qur'an. And the guide which will never misguide you. And the book which speaks and never tells a lie. It applies only to the book of Allah, brothers and sisters. Only the Holy Quran. There's no discrepancy in it. No inaccuracy in it. Some have tried to, throughout history, to bring inaccuracies. But they have failed. All those efforts have failed. The Quran, we see history testifies to its truthfulness. Not a single verse in the Holy Quran is inaccurate or has false information. You know, they say that once there was a professor at the university and he was speaking to his students. And he was telling them that, who's a Muslim here? Let me see a raise of hands. So one of those students raised his hand. He told them, you believe the Quran is the book of God? He said, yes, of course, I believe that. He says, you believe the Qur'an, everything that it says is accurate? He says, yes, of course, I believe that. He says, well, we have an issue. Because in Surah Al-Ahzab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, مَا جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِرَجُلٍ مِنْ قَلْبَيْنِ فِي Allah says, we have not created two hearts in a man. He says, why does the Qur'an say man? This is inaccurate. Because women, they don't have two hearts. Why is the Qur'an only singling out the man? The student thought a little bit. He was intelligent, you know. He wasn't saying the tafsir of the Qur'an. He was just trying to give a nice reply to his professor. He said, no, the Qur'an is very accurate. Only a man has one heart. A woman can have two hearts. He says, how? What do you mean? Is this what the Qur'an teaches you? 
He says, no, Habibi, this is what pregnancy teaches me. A woman, when she's pregnant, she can have two hearts. That's why Allah says, a man does not have two hearts in him. And subhanallah, we see the amazing you know, dimensions of the Holy Quran. By the way, this is not the tafsir of the verse. The verse has another tafsir. But this was a smart way of explaining this verse. Subhanallah, a woman can have several hearts if she's pregnant, of course. You have several hearts beating in her. There are no inaccuracies in the Holy Quran, in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, some of those ignorant atheists, they come and tell you, yes, there is one verse in the Quran which is not accurate. The verse which says that Allah created the samawat بِغَيْرِ amadin tarawnaha. Allah created the universe, the skies, without any visible pillars. They mock the Qur'an and they say, see these Muslims, this Qur'an, this fake Qur'an. It does not know that what's holding this universe is gravity. They think there are pillars holding it. Because the Qur'an says Allah is holding the universe together through pillars which you do not see. Isn't this another word for gravity? What the Qur'an says, because what does a pillar do? A pillar holds something. How is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala holding the universe? Allah is saying with pillars that you can't see. The eyes cannot detect them. That's exactly what gravity is, subhanAllah. They try to use the verses against the Qur'an, but these verses prove the authenticity of the Qur'an. You can't see gravity, but it's holding the universe. We can detect gra gravity, but you can't see it with the visible eye. بِغَيْرِ amadin تَرَوْنَا this is the miracle of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll find them making very silly objections to the Qur'an. Like Maryam ibn Amran. She's the daughter of Amran. And the Qur'an says, Ya Ukhta Harun. She's the sister of Harun. So the Qur'an is saying that she's the sister of Prophet Musa because he's also Musa ibn Amran. And there's over 1,000 years between Prophet Musa and Maryam. These silly objections. Where in the Qur'an did it say Maryam is the daughter of Amran, the father of Musa? That's a different Imran that the Holy Quran is referring to. But they will try to find every verse that they can get their hands on in order to attack the Holy Quran. But all these efforts, brothers and sisters, fail throughout history. Many have tried to bring the book of Allah down. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports His book. We have revealed the dhikr, the Qur'an, and we shall protect the Holy Qur'an. Hence, we see Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, saying, لَا يُعْوَجُّ لَا يَعْوَجُّ فَيُقَام وَلَا تُخْلِقُهُ كَثْرَةُ الرَّدُ وَوُلُوجُ السَّمْءِ One of the beautiful features of the Holy Qur'an is that it does not ever has to be revised, corrected. And the more and more you read it, Discuss it, the more fresh it becomes. Allahu Akbar. Show me a book like the Holy Quran. Which matches the Holy Quran in these amazing features that it has. Have you ever heard in history that a group of scholars, they've discovered there is an error in the Quran? Let's revise it, let's fix it. With any other book that happens. Go bring me any book in medicine and philosophy from a thousand years ago we see that most of the facts in it have changed. Science has proven that a lot of it is false. Modern philosophy has proven a lot of it is incorrect. Except the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 14 centuries have passed, yet the Holy Quran continues to be accurate. You know, even when you go to the Bible, scholars of the Bible, we're talking about Christian scholars, they admit that the Bible has some inaccuracies. Because the Bible is not the actual word of God. It's the word of who? Mark, John, Paul. Paul wrote most of the Bible, by the way. And the Christianity that we have today is Pauline Christianity. You know Paul never saw Jesus in his life? Well, he claims he saw him once through a vision. But we're not going to believe his vision, of course. But Paul never saw Jesus. How can I take my holy book from a man who never saw Jesus and he was not one of his students or disciples. He never lived with Jesus. He never even heard Prophet Jesus. 
Of course you're going to have inaccuracies in this book. We believe in the original Bible, but not the Bible that we have today. This has been changed. This is the impression of Paul and Mark and John and these others who wrote the Bible. These are not the actual words of Allah. Hence, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib السلام, in referring to the Quran, he says, وَكِتَابَ اللَّهِ بَيْنَ أَظْهُرِكُمْ Look, this is the only book of God, which is the actual word of God that you have. All other books in history, people either did not have access to them. You know the Torah? Even during the Jewish nations, which had the Torah, the average people did not have access to the Torah. Only the rabbis and some Jewish scholars, they had access to it. The average layperson, they didn't have access to the full Torah. The Imam is saying, but the Quran, everyone has access to it. You can memorize it, you can read it. You don't have to go and take the Quran from a scholar. No, everyone has the book of Allah. Look at this wonderful book of Allah. Allah has given you the opportunity. So we see that in the Holy Quran, there are no errors, no inaccuracies whatsoever. And that's truly amazing. And the more you read the Quran, the more fresh it becomes. The Qur'an speaks to you even in 2016. It's as if the Qur'an was revealed today. If you understand the Qur'an and you comprehend it, you see that the Qur'an is always fresh, speaking to you in such an amazing way. Subhanallah. Every other book, you know, gets outdated, becomes archaic. It's no longer relevant. But the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's always relevant. You read those verses tonight, brothers and sisters. See how they will interact with your heart. But try to understand them so you can apply them to your everyday lifestyle. This is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's appreciate the Holy Quran. That's why the Imam alayhi salam in Najil Balagha, he says, with the Holy Quran, there's no poverty. You don't need anything. And without it, there's no richness. You can have all the riches of the world. But if you don't have the Holy Qur'an, you're not rich. You're the poorest of the poor. This amazing book of Allah in which Imam Zain al-Abidin salam he teaches us that it is truly a treasure. The Imam says when you come across a verse, it's a treasure box. Open it. See what's inside it. Unfortunately, in the month of Ramadan, when we read the Qur'an, we're always hasty looking when will this surah will end, when this juz and chapter will end. The Imam says it's a treasure box. Look into this treasure. What do you have in this treasure? Do we treat the Holy Quran that way, brothers and sisters, or no? This is the problem. We have mistreated the Holy Quran. وَقَالَ Rasul. Look at Surah Al-Furqan on the Day of Judgment. What, would Allah, what will the Prophet say? يَا رَبْ إِنَّ قَوْمِ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا Oh Allah, my people, they abandoned the Qur'an. They neglected the Qur'an. The Prophet and the Qur'an will complain on the Day of Judgment if we did not make this holy book a part of our everyday lives. Then we see Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib giving us a fascinating description of the Qur'an. The Imam alayhi salam says, As-Samit al natiq one of the features of this Qur'an is that it's silent, it's vocal. Now some may think Imam Ali salam is contradicting himself when he gives us a few descriptions. For example, the Imam says the Qur'an is silent and vocal. Then in another part of Nahj al the Imam says, The Qur'an is vocal and it never gets tired. Then we see in another part of Nahj al the Imam says, فَهَذَا الْقُرْآنُ فَاسْتَنْطِقُهُ وَلَنْ يَنْطِقَ لَكُمْ This is the Qur'an, try to speak to it, have it speak to you, but it will not speak to you. Is this a contradiction? What's this dichotomy here? That the Qur'an is silent, but it also speaks to us? In order to understand that, let's take this through stages. For most Muslims, yes, unfortunately the, Qur the Qur'an is silent. Why? Because we treat it as such. We don't deal with it properly. So it's a silent book. It's only a book that we use for barakah, for khira. And maybe if someone passes away, we take the Qur'an 
And it's just a routine that we read the Quran. The Imam, he himself said, there shall come a time in which nothing from Islam will remain except its name. And nothing from the Quran except its routine. The Quran will become a routine. So unfortunately for most Muslims, yes, the Quran is silent. The Quran does not solve our problems. Why? Because we don't treat it properly. We don't try to take its solution. When you go to a doctor, he gives you a prescription. You don't take that prescription, kiss it, and seek its blessings, and put it on your shelf for 30 years, do you? No. Because you'll be mocking yourself and your doctor and the prescription. When you get a prescription, use it. Go and get the medicine and actually take it. The Holy Quran is a prescription from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not only for barakah and khirah. The Holy Quran is for us to get the solution from. Now yes, for some, those very few believing Muslims, the Quran is vocal. It speaks to them. Natiq. You open the Holy Quran every time you read the same verse in Surah, but it speaks to you differently. It really soothes your heart and it gives you the solution to your problems. Then the Imam السلام, says, but there is a condition. The Quran will not speak to you unless I tell you about the Quran. The Imam is teaching Muslims after 14 centuries that you will not get to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without the Ahl al-Bayt. You want the Quran to speak to you? Go through its right path. Go through the Ahl al-Bayt whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned to explain to us the Holy Quran. You know why 14 centuries have passed and the Muslim world is in a mess? Because they have not approached the Quran with the key of Ahl al-Bayt. They're trying keys, all these keys, but the golden key is in the hands of Ahl al-Bayt. You don't take that key, you will not unlock the secrets of the Holy Quran. This entire Quran that we have is, is from the blessings of Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them. You know, even the Qira'a that we have today, because there was a time where you had multiple recitations of the Quran, multiple versions. This correct version that we have today, you know is who, from who? From the followers of Imam Ali and from Imam Ali alayhi salam. Because who's the one who narrates to us the version of the Quran we have today? Hafs. Hafs was a Shi'i. From the companions of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Who does he narrate it from? From Asim. Asim was a Shi'i in Kufa. Who does he narrate it from? He narrates it from Abu Abdul Rahman al-Silmi or al-Salami. The companion of Amir al-Mu'mineen from Imam Ali. Every Muslim needs to know today that this copy that you have of the Qur'an and this recitation and this version of the Qur'an goes back to Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi But have we done justice to the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them? Then finally the Imam alayhi salam says, فَإِنَّ فِيهِ شِفَاءً مِنْ كُلِّ دَا the Qur'an has the cure from every disease, especially the biggest disease. مِنْ أَكْبَرِ الدَّاءِ وَهُوَ الْكُفْرُ وَالنِّفَاقِ وَالْغَيُّ وَالظَّلَالِ The biggest disease is the disease of the heart. Disbelief, hypocrisy, and going astray. The Qur'an gives you protection from all of that. It is the medicine that will heal you from the biggest type of disease that you have. Then the Imam alayhi salam in this final statement, listen to what he says. فَاسْأَلُوا اللَّهَ بِهِ Turn to Allah through the Holy Qur'an. This book is your means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتَوَجَّهُوا إِلَيْهِ بِحُبِّهِ Love your Qur'an, and through the love of your Qur'an, you can go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِنَّهُ شَافِعٌ مُشَفَّعٌ The best shafi' the best intercessor, the one who will intercede for you on the day of judgment is, you know what? The Holy Qur'an. Because the hadith says, Sunni and Shia sources, from the Prophet and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, we have multiple narrations that tell us on the day of judgment, as a person is going through those difficult, very difficult moments where you realize maybe your deeds 
are not the best of deeds and you have so many sins, but you did not mistreat the Quran. You took some time every once in a while to read the book of Allah. You respected the book of Allah. You tried to practice it with sincerity. You know what the hadith says? In the grave and especially on the day of judgment. While you were frightened in the saha of mahshar before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this beautiful creation with this beautiful perfume, with this beautiful face will come to you. He will grab your hands and he will take you to paradise. He'll save you from all of those troubles on the day of judgment. As you're passing Sarat, he'll hold your hands and he'll take you the other side. When you get to the door of paradise, you will look at this beautiful being. Who are you? You look so beautiful and handsome. And you have taken me and saved me from all these troubles. Can you please introduce yourself to me? That being will tell you, yes, I am the Holy Quran. I am the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you were good to me when you were alive in the world, I have now come to pay you back. Then you will enter the paradise with the book of Allah. Then the Quran will tell you now, read me. Read a verse and I'll elevate you. The more verses you read, not only just memorized, but practiced. The more verses you've practiced in life, the higher your level be in paradise. This is the power of shafa'ah. And the one who reads the Holy Quran and practices the Holy Quran, he will also be given the power of shafa'ah. Allah will empower you to do shafa'ah for 10 people through the blessings of the Holy Quran. On such a night, brothers and sisters, open your heart to the Holy Qur'an. To the forgiveness that we find in the Holy Qur'an. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ See how the Qur'an speaks to those sinners. Oh Allah, on such a night. We're all sinners. But the hope is in the Holy Qur'an. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ O oh, you the ones who have sinned excessively. Doesn't this apply to us? لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ Never lose hope from the mercy of Allah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Allah will forgive all of the sins. Look at another verse. That's even more fascinating. See how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks in Surah Al-Furqan. إِلَّا مَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا إِلَّا مَنْ تَابَ وَآمَنَ وَعَمِلَ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ You know what this verse says? No, it's not that Allah will forgive your sins tonight. No, no, no. This verse takes it to another level. See how generous Allah is. Not only will Allah give you good deeds tonight and forgive you your sins, no. That sin which you committed, Allah will transform it into a deed. Such that on the day of judgment, you'll see a huge mountain of deeds. Oh Allah, I never did those deeds. Allah says, because you were a believer and because you repented, I transformed all of those sins and made them into deeds. Show me more generosity than that. That sin which you committed, that sin in itself will become a good deed. Just like a tree. Haven't you seen a tree that produces these beautiful, delicious fruits? How does it do so? From the dirty soil. From the fertilizer. You see how the fertilizer changes into this beautiful smell of the fruit? That's how Tawbah changes your sins into good deeds. It's like a tree that takes the sins and transforms them into good deeds. Open your heart on such a night to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now I request everyone to grab a copy 
of the Holy Quran so that we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Washafa'un mushaffa. It is the book that shall intercede for us, brothers and sisters. Take the Quran, place it before you. Open the Holy Quran to any random page. Look at the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will heal your heart. It will heal your heart. Take a copy of the Holy Quran, open it. So we begin the a'mal of Laylatul Qadr, insha'Allah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad.